Okay class, today we're going to talk about congruence and transformations. The objectives, draw, identify, describe transformations in the coordinate plane. Use properties of rigid motions to determine whether figures are congruent and to prove figures congruent. Alright, you have this on your teaching transparency. We've got four types of transformations here. We have translations. It's so where you slide your pre-image to get your image, moving it horizontally and then vertically. Your reflection, which is a flip. You can reflect it across the y-axis with this rule, across the x-axis with this rule, or you can even reflect it across the reflection line. We have a rotation, clockwise, counterclockwise, 180 degrees. And then we have a dilation, where you multiply your coordinates by a scale factor. Apply the transformation to the polygon with the given vertices. Identify and describe the transformation. We start with the blue image, the blue pre-image, end up with the red image. Remember, the pre is what you start with, the image is what you end up with. All right, to me it looks like a translation, a slide. So for P prime, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 4, add 1. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So P prime should be at negative 3, 4. Q prime, same rule. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, 1 plus 1 is 2, Q prime, and then our last vertice here, 4 minus 4 is 0, 1 plus 1 is 2. Therefore, this is a translation. It is a slide that is 4 units left and 1 unit up. Now when you look at your diagram, we have our pre-image right here in blue and our image right here in red. To me, it kind of looks like a flip across this x-axis as your reflection line. So if we start with our vertice A, and here's what we're mapping, the image to A prime would be, keep your x-coordinate, your y-coordinate goes to its opposite, A prime, 1, negative 2. Same rule applies for each vertice. So B prime would be keep your X coordinate. Your Y value goes to its opposite. And C prime, keep your X coordinate. Y value goes to its opposite. This, therefore, this is a reflection across the X axis. Okay, right here in blue is our pre-image. Our red is our image. To me, it looks like a turn, which is a rotation. Let's apply the rule, y negative x. So for r prime, we have our y coordinate, which is now our x coordinate. And opposite of x, well, the opposite of a negative 3 is a positive 3. So for vertice r prime, it should be 0, positive 3. Then for E prime, our Y coordinate, our X coordinate, but then you take the opposite. So for E prime, 3, 3. C prime, and then on our last one, T prime. This is a turn, which is a rotation clockwise, 90 degrees. Okay, if you look at your diagram, we have our pre image and we go to our image. Notice how the size of the triangle is different now. So it looks like a dilation. 
Let's apply our rule where we're multiplying each coordinate by 3. So k prime should be negative 6, negative 3. L prime, 3, negative 3. N prime, 3, negative 6. Therefore, this is a dilation with a scale factor of 3. Now we're going to name the, we're going to apply the transformation to the polygon with these vertices. We're going to name the coordinates of the image. So the rule we're using to map it is we're times in each coordinate by 3. Therefore, D prime is going to be 3, 9. E prime, 3, negative 6. F prime. 9, 0. Identify and describe the transformation. Well, when you're multiplying the coordinates by a number, this is a dilation with a scale factor of 3. In isometry is a transformation that preserves length, angle measures, and area. Because of these properties, an isometry produces an image that is congruent to the pre-image. A rigid transformation is another name for an isometry. Translations, reflections, and rotations produce images that are congruent to their pre-images. However, dilations, unless it has a scale factor of 1, does not produce images that are congruent to their pre-images. Determine whether the polygons with the given vertices are congruent. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what the rule is here. To me, when you start with the pre-image and go to the image, it looks like a slide. So, how do we get from negative 3 to negative 4? For our y coordinates, how do we get from 1 to negative 2? So, let's test this out and say that we're going to map it by moving the x coordinate left 1 and the y coordinate left 3. A negative 3 plus a negative 1 is negative 4. 1 plus a negative 3 is negative 2. Check. Must apply for each one. 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 minus 3 is 0. Check. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus a negative 3 is a negative 2. Check. Therefore, what type of transformation is this? This is a translation, and translation does produce congruent transformations. All right, we start with our blue pre-image. End up with the red image. Size is changing here. Looks like a dilation. Let's make sure this is a dilation. A dilation is where you multiply the x by a scale factor to get your prime here. So, 2 times what gives me 3? Alright, 
Let's check the Y. The Y should be the same. With a dilation, scale factor should be the same for each coordinate. But let's double check. Negative 2 times what will give me negative 3? Okay, well, we checked there. They're the same. So let's apply the rule up here. So we're going to multiply each one by 3 halves. 2 times 3 halves is 3. Negative 2 times 3 halves is negative 3. Check. 4 times 3 halves, 12 over 2, 6. Check. Negative 2 times 3 halves, negative 3. 4 times 3 halves, 6. Check. Negative 4 times 3 halves, negative 6. Therefore, this is a dilation with a scale factor. of 3 half and a dilation does not produce congruent polygons. Determine whether the polygons with the given vertices are congruent. Support your answer by describing a transformation. Alrighty. So, let's look at our x values here. 2 plus what is going to give me 1? Negative 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Well, 3 minus 1 is 0. So, it's not a translation. Let's think of a dilation. 2 times what will give me 1? 1 half. 2 times 1 half is 1. However, 3 times 1 half is not 0. So it's not a dilation. So we're looking at a reflection or a rotation. All right, well, I have my x coordinate and my y. Do you all see a pattern here? So I'm mapping my x coordinate is now my y coordinate on that second one, but what's going on here? looks like it's going to its opposite. So let's double check. If we apply negative y, x, to opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. Let's see if it works here. Opposite of 0 is still 0, your x coordinate. Opposite of positive 3 is negative 3, and your x coordinate. So. We're going to map by a negative y and an x. So this is a reflection. Actually, it's not a reflection. It is a rotation. It's a rotation. And there's your rule. And that's it.